Well, this guy apparently did not want to come this way and just heard me. It's a raccoon. Now he's going back across. <laughs> Musky bait. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, it's early in the morning. I got up before the kids got up so I could get out and do a, a video for you. And uh, walked out here and there was a raccoon trying to swim across the river. I don't know if he made it yet. I don't know. I don't know where he went, but he, he swam about halfway out twice and then would swim back almost to shore. See me swim back out halfway into the river. It was pretty funny. I don't know where he is now. He's either probably right behind me or he's on the other side of the river. Um, anyways, one of the nice things about getting up early is you don't know what you're going to see. One of the great things about our sport of fishing is you get out early and you get to see things most people don't get to see, whether it's a sunrise or, you know, the creatures that are out and about. It's just one of the cool things about our sport. Uh, so today I want to talk about grass fishing and specifically deep weed line fishing. It's that time of year where the grass, regardless of where you're at in the country, whether up north, down south, the grass is getting to the point where it's it's hitting its summer peaks. You know, so you're having topped out grass in places. You've got good weed lines that are forming, and it's one of my favorite ways to fish. You know, specifically up here in Wisconsin in the North Country, deep weed lines are kind of what I would relate to like down south on the TVA lakes where you have ledges. You know, the fish will move from their spawning areas out to the deeper water as the, as the water gets warmer. And generally, if a lake has good weeds in it, those fish will move out to the outside weed line and don't move out too much deeper. So if you've got a lake that's got, you know, lots of 20, 30, 40, 50 foot of water with good structure, if the weeds stop in 10 or 14 foot of water, the majority of the population is going to be in that 10 to 14 foot of water during the summer months. And it's somewhat similar down south as well. I mean, you've got the fish will move out on lakes like Gunnersville. They'll move out into the deeper grass and just kind of stick there until the fall. Uh, even into the fall, they'll stay in the grass. And they do that here too. They'll be in the grass up until, really up until the grass starts to die. Once the grass starts dying, oxygen levels will fall in the grass and the fish will move out of it. But that's one of the keys in the fall is and in going into the winters is continuing to stay on top of where the good green grass is. Because as you have these big grass flats, the fish as grass dies off will continue to move into the grass that is still nice and green because they're, the grass is giving off uh, oxygen and, and providing higher levels of oxygen for those fish. So up here in the north country and down south or wherever you're at don't don't try to avoid the grass you want to move into the grass you know the grass the, if you've ever gone in the water and scuba dove scuba dive or you know swam through the grass uh it's amazing what you see it's like just little worlds of of it's like swimming through an aquarium you've got fish from tiny you know minnow sized all the way up to the biggest predators and they just swim around that grass like you know like the rest of us are walking through a mall i mean it's pretty ridiculous so what i want to get into today guys are my favorite deep weed line baits you know i've got uh i've really got four baits that we I mean, have four types of baits i you know i got my favorite baits but it really comes down to the type of bait so I've got four type of baits that I always have rigged up and I have very, very few days when those, you know, those baits don't work. And usually what you'll find is one bait works better than the others. And a lot of times it's not necessarily that that bait is what the fish want that day. It's that bait works the best in that type of weed line. And what I mean by that is some places you go, you have a weed line that is like a wall, right? You've got solid weed on this side and not a stitch of weed on this side or other times you go you know you've got a tapered a gradual taper and the weeds just peter out but when they do that you have a stalk 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 you know you have random stalks all over 
And because of that, the bait that worked on that on that solid wall may not work as good as it would in, you know, in that scattered grass. So usually what you'll find is one bait works better than another bait because of the type of grass you're in and not because that's what the fish want. Generally, when you're fishing grass, deep grass, and you find fish, there's more fish there. And usually you get them fired up on, you know, on one bait, you can catch a pile on that same bait and then rotate through baits and catch a few extras. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go through my baits and then and tell you why I like them. The first bait is a jig and specifically a casting jig. So this is a Luke Lawson, Dirty Jigs Luke Lawson casting jig uh, with a Berkeley Creature Hog, Max Scent Creature Hog on the back. For me, a jig is so good for fishing deep weeds because of the fact that it's weedless. You can snap it out of those grass, and if it's good green grass, the grass will break and allow you to create that reaction strike so you can rip that bait right through it. But it's also a great bait to determine like what you're fishing from a grass standpoint. So if, if you're throwing up into the grass, you have really good feel to determine how solid is that grass weed line and when you're in the grass versus out of the grass. Uh, the bass absolutely love it. It's just a great big fish bait when you're fishing the weeds. But I, because I fish it more in that stroking manner, you know, where I'm ripping it in and out of the grass, I throw it, let it hit the bottom, and I'm just ripping it. I'm not working it back like you would a normal jig. I'm hopping it through that because I know if I can't drag it through it, because if you're dragging it through it, you're just going to be in the weeds. You want to create that explosion and just rip it through the weeds, and they'll crack that as soon as it comes free. But I love it because I can fish it fast. It's a good search bait. You know, it's it really allows me to find the fish. So a jig is almost always one of the first baits I go to, and specifically a casting jig. Again, you know, this is built to come through the weeds better. It's 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 just got the the build and the head style that works really well anytime you're fishing around around grass, and specifically deeper weed lines. So that's that's one of my first go tos. The next is a crankbait. So this is the uh, Dredger 10.5, uh, the Digger 10.5 by Berkeley. The crankbait, guys, this is one of those baits I was talking about that really de depends on the grass that you're fishing. The crankbait is such a good search bait when fishing deep weed lines, but you have to have the right crankbait. Meaning, you know, if I went up one size in this Digger, to a bait that ran two feet deeper, and I might be in the weeds the entire day and I'm not gonna be able to fish that grass efficiently. If I went, you know, one size smaller, I might be going too shallow and now I'm not ticking the tops of the weeds. You need a bait that runs perfectly. So when you have the crankbait that fits, you know, what your need is, it's, it's hard to beat a crankbait on the deep weed lines but it takes some practice and it takes a bunch of trial and error on the water to find the right crankbait. So a lot of times I'll have like three crankbaits rigged up so that I have one that runs the right depth and is not getting into the weeds. And, and you know, with this, it's all about ticking the tops and coming through clean. But the crankbait guys is one of the absolute best baits you can throw on deep weed lines. And it's really good, like I said, if you've got a wall you know, a really solid grass line that you, you know, you're visually seeing or you can see using your electronics, a crankbait is a great bait. It's a must if you're fishing deep weed lines. So it's just about, like I said, it's about finding the right one. The next is a big heavier spinner bait. This is a Strike King. Um, this is just the bottom dweller series. This is a three quarter ounce, but I'll go up to an ounce and a half, just depending on how deep I'm fishing. Again, this is another one that's really good because you, it'll stay down because it's a heavy spinner bait, but you can tick the tops of the grass and keep it coming through and you can feel what's going on. Um, you know, again, the spinner bait just generates big strikes. It's a really good bait. I don't, I don't feel like I get as many bites on it, but the size is better. So if I've located an area with one of these two baits, that's when, you know, I'll, I'll switch over and throw a big heavy spinner bait to generate a few extra strikes. And a lot of times it's the biggest bite. So I, I always have a, a spinner bait on. It's usually not the first bait I'm going with. The next is a good big worm of some sort. 
but specifically I like one that's got some kicking motion. So this is, so I've got two here. This is the Berkeley wind-up worm. I don't know where the tag is, the wind-up worm. And then the other one that I really like is a zoom, uh, this is just a speed worm. This is the magnum. So you can see these are about the same size and length. They're both big worms, but the key on it is the tail, guys. You know, they both have really good kicking tails. The, the Berkeley wind-up worm has the boot tail, and I really, really love this worm. And then the, the Zoom speed worm has just a cut tail. They both produce a ton of motion, and, and you know, you rig this up Texas style. I like to rig it with a, uh, usually, you know, if I'm fishing deeper, I'm talking like a 3 8 ounce weight, unpegged uh, bullet weight. And then just you know hooking it with a usually a four aught EWG. I like the Fusion 19 Berkeley EWG worm hooks. Uh, but that's you know that's just another great bait. And the thing with the worms is again I'm usually not starting with these. I'm gonna fish with the jig or the crankbait until I find fish. And once I do though, guys, this is how you pick that spot apart. You throw a worm down, you drag it around, and it works great. The only real time I'm starting with a worm is if I know the conditions are tougher and the fish are buried down more in the grass, because then I got to make sure I get a bait down to them. Or if I'm fishing grass that uh, is thicker, but not, you know, not too thick. It, it Basically, if I'm fishing thicker grass where I can't really efficiently work a jig or a crankbait and I need to, to get something down in there, that's when I'll grab like a wind-up worm and kind of try to get it down through the grass stalks. But generally that's, you know, that's again in tougher conditions where the fish aren't willing to come up through the grass. You know, if they're buried down in it, you got to go down after them. And usually then you need something that's much more weedless, you know, like the wind-up worm, uh, uh, you know, rig it Texas style with a bullet weight and you're good to go. But those guys are the four main baits that I love to use when fishing deep weed lines. So this is the time of year, guys. Get out there and fish them. You know, they're really starting to group up. When you find one, make sure you fish that area thoroughly because there'll be more in that area. I hope it was helpful, guys. Hit the like button if it was. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, a lot of these baits are available at therealshot.com. So click the description. Look at the description in the video, and I've got links to a lot of these baits. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you can purchase some of your tackle at therealshot.com. Stefan10 is a discount code, gets a 10% off your order. Thanks for watching. Tips come out every day, so stay tuned for tomorrow's.